All right. So I finished off my black and white logo. I'm happy with it. It's made up of all of these separate black shapes, which are individual paths that can be turned on and off, right? And the most important thing is it's all just black cutout shapes. There's no white in there. There's no gray in there. It's just a really simple idea. It's like black paper cutout. That's the most versatile a logo can be. So how do I save it? How do I put it up on the photo bucket? How do I print it? You have to get it out of Illustrator by saying file, save as, and you need it to be an EPS file, right? So while you're working on it, it's fine if it's an AI file, an Adobe Illustrator file, but once you wanna do other things with it, you need it to be an EPS, which is a portable vector format. The other portable vector format is SVG. I just don't like it as much, right? So remember to name your, your black and white logo with your name, and then I'm gonna put assignment six. I'm gonna, just gonna call it black logo as an EPS to the desktop. And I want all of you to do that, even if your, your vector still needs work. Because I want you to know how to, how to do this. Use all the default settings for EPS. Those default settings will leave it transparent in the background. And now look at your desktop. You have an EPS file. EPS files are shown with a little grid behind them. I don't know why, it's kind of cool. Now, what we're going to do, this is different. We're not gonna open up our EPS in Photoshop because if we do that, look what happens. Even though you can open it up in Photoshop, it's gonna give you this screen first, which forces you to rasterize your vector. We don't wanna rasterize our vector. We want to have all the advantages of it being infinitely scalable. So instead, to bring it into Photoshop, which we need to do to make it something we can print, is we need to open up a Photoshop file on its own. And so I'm going to go File, New. And because my vector can fill any resolution I want, I get to set whatever size I want. And because we're going to print these logos on an eight by 10 piece of paper, right? At 350 pixels per inch, I want you to create yours to be eight by 10 inches. So my orientation is going to be landscape format because my logo is wider than it is tall. It's going to be 10 inches wide by eight inches tall at 350 pixels per inch. Background will be white, all the standards. Right? So I've created my paper. Now, just like we've done with so many composite elements, but we've never brought in a vector, I'm going to click on my EPS logo from the desktop, drag and drop it into Photoshop. And it is a smart layer. I can hold down Shift and Option. I pretend this is the mat that's around it. I hit Return to place it and it's in Photoshop. The beauty is I can resize it anytime I want because it's a smart layer. It doesn't force me to rasterize it. And so no matter how big I wanna make this image, if I wanna now make it a, a billboard size, 12 feet by 24 feet by 350 pixels per inch, it will still, it will re-rasterize to that format perfectly clean. That is the advantage of vector line work, okay? So now I have a file that is black and white. It's good. How do I put it into PhotoBucket, put it online in a way that works? Well, the problem is I don't want to have it with a white background because logos aren't supposed to have a white rectangle around them, right? So this is good for printing, but to turn it in, what I want you to do is turn off the white background and I want you to duplicate it and fill it instead with gray. This is to show you the versatility of this one black shape logo design. So we're going to fill it not with white, but with 50% gray. Then I want you to double click on your logo, your smart layer, and I want you to add a stroke around it. And this stroke, we want to be white. This is called an offset color. 
And you can play with the stroke. You want it to be on the outside. You want it to be 100% opaque. You want it on normal mode. But you can play with how big it is. It's like making it a sticker. Right. Now, why is that necessary? Well, what if this logo is going to be printed on a gray business card, right? Or on a black t-shirt? The, this offset stroke helps it show up. And in Photobucket, when we show it in a slideshow, it shows on a black background. We need your black shaped logo to show up on a black background. Now this is one way to do it, right? With just a solid stroke. Another way to do it is with a drop shadow. We can make that drop shadow white. So the reverse. And we can play with the settings of that drop shadow all on the vector without hurting our pixels. We can play with how soft or hard it is. I kind of like this because it looks spookier. It looks spooky. Right? I can play with the angle of the drop shadow, but it makes sense for it to be from above. I can play with how sharp it is, how far it is. You know, so that looks kind of cool. So I like that. I like that. I don't know which one I like better. I guess I like this one better, right? So then I say, okay. Notice I haven't affected my, I haven't changed my logo at all. I just added an effect to it, right? Then I'm gonna turn off my background. And even though I don't see the white, the white's there. Now I save it as a PNG. So same thing, Carl, assignment six, um, black logo with offset. This makes it really versatile as a PNG. Also going to copy that name because I want to save this as a PSD as well. So file, then save as, same thing, but as the PSD to the desktop. So now, if I open up that PNG, I can see that offset, and it will work on any background. That's what I want you to upload to PhotoBucket with your sketch or your black and white logo. So all you need to do that is your EPS file, but first you have to go to Photoshop and make an 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch new file, and then drag and drop your EPS onto that. 350. 8 by 10, 350. Um, what I'm going to do is put it into PhotoBucket. I'm starting to gather ideas and references for our next assignment, which will be doing line art in, in Illustrator that's more complex for an illustration. And just to remind you, you go to the Assignments folder within PhotoBucket, you go to Assignment 6, I'm going to go to the Instructor Demo part, and you can see you're going to upload your sketch, your black shape logo, and then a color version. But once you have your black shape logo, it's really easy to add color because color is, is just something that adds to it. It's not something it depends on. Right. Now I'm going to upload this guy. Oh, no, not the EPS. Sorry, I'm going to upload the offset PNG. And I got to find my sketch and upload that. If Photo Bucket doesn't like it, what I recommend is you open it in preview and you just export it 
again as a PNG. Because sometimes there's like um, leftover programming tags when you do effects in Photoshop. And PNGs take a while to, to save in Photoshop. Then you label them, just like I have up on the board, with our semester code and numbers and your name. So your sketch is number one, and your black and white logo is number two. But we're not done yet. So what you do is you put a gray background behind it just so you can see what the offset is doing. And then before you save it, you turn off the gray background and save it as a PNG. Oh, so it is instead transparent in the background. But it has this offset. And I'll show you how that looks. right? Because now, now that it is a black shape, when I view it in the slideshow with a black background, because we want the logo to be clear, simple, and versatile, right? But a black logo on a, on a black um, background doesn't make a lot of sense. So instead, I don't think it caught up with me yet. Instead, you want that offset on there so it shows up on a dark background. Go find my new one. So here are some examples of logos with offsets. So that's just a solid stroke offset. And then we're going to add color. I don't know why my new one's not showing up here. Maybe it needs a little time to process it. But that's the order. Sketch and then black and white. Right, let me pause it. So once you have your sketch and your black cutout shape with the offset uploaded, the offset is that white rim around it that we put in in Photoshop. Let's go back to that Photoshop file and let's put back the white background, right? Because another effect, and I'm going to make a duplicate of it, another effect we can add is color. We don't need our logo to be a black shape, we can make it a color, any color we want. That's the easiest way to do a color logo, right? So instead of black ink, it's now red ink. Same time the ink starts. I can also do a gradient, right? So instead of one color ink, it can be a mix of different colors, angled, uh, stretched out, right? You can control, just like we did when you did the sky behind our cloud, you can control your gradient. Make it as versatile and as various as you want. This looks very kind of tech company-ish. I like the complements of blue and orange. And I can layer that up. So I can keep that at normal mode, while on top of it I have a color overlay that I use with a lower opacity. Like that. Right. So those are the really simple ways to add color. Now remember, this is still with the offset. Right. So what if I want to add color behind it? Does that make sense? So what I can do is I can take my vector I can use my magic wand with contiguous turned on to select all the empty space around my logo. Then make a new layer, right? And it just like we did with our cloud, that gives me like a cookie cutter shape of the silhouette of my logo. It's like the paper behind the sticker. I can say select inverse 
and I can fill that 